Welcome back. I'm with Dr. Hecker, who is with us today to talk about hidden heart disease. So doctor, some people actually talk about hearing their heartbeat at night when they go to bed, and I've even had this happen to me and often wondered about that. So can you talk about this? Is this cause for concern at all? Yeah, you know, that's really an interesting thing. I actually would encourage people, if you hear your heartbeat, it's quite normal and we all can do it at different times. And I think it's really good to feel connected to your heart in this way. It really can give you important information about your health. Um, if you feel other things along with it, for example, if you're thirsty or lightheaded, it might be a sign that you're dehydrated. Um, if it's going fast or irregular, or in some way causes you to feel troubled, um, that might be an abnormality and it would be definitely something to discuss with your healthcare provider. Um, it might even tell you that you're having emotional stress and maybe that's something you need to think about and check in with yourself to say, what does my life look like right now and are there things I could do to make it better? So that's a, a great point right there as well. So are there differences between that emotional stress, per, perhaps even a panic attack or anxiety symptoms wise versus a heart condition or heart attack? Yeah, that's a really good question. And the difference can be very hard to sort out even for healthcare professionals. So I would encourage anyone if they have a new symptom that they haven't had before or something that's troubling to them to discuss it with their provider. Um, sometimes panic attacks can precipitate heart attacks or arrhythmias, a fast heart rate and vice versa. Sometimes a fast heart rate, it actually creates stress and adrenaline in your body which can then precipitate a panic attack. So they can be difficult to sort out if you know you have panic attacks and this is just like your other panic attacks, you're probably just fine. On the other hand, if you know you have panic attacks and suddenly you feel differently, that's a time that you might want to seek some medical attention. And we're talking you know, immediately, not necessarily wait till you can make an appointment with the physician. Yeah, maybe go to the emergency department. Okay. So here's a question for you. Have you ever had anyone report tooth pain as a symptom of a heart issue? I definitely have. And it, that's another one that's tricky to sort out. I actually had a woman who got two teeth pulled and she was, it was, her pain was coming from her heart. She ended up on a trial of antibiotics um, because the, it, the pain actually was in her tooth and in her throat. And um, they thought then she had pharyngitis and it all turned out to be her heart. That being said, most of the time, tooth pain comes from your teeth. But if you have, again, a new symptom that's unusual or can't be explained, or if you have a toothache and you go to your dentist and he or she says they can't find anything, it's probably a good idea to see your doctor. And your primary care doctor can evaluate you and then decide whether or not maybe you need to, to see a cardiac specialist, is that correct? Yeah, primary care doctors are wonderful with that sort of thing. They, they can figure out, does the patient need more, more evaluation or not? Great. So a question on postmenopausal women, and I'd like to know from your opinion, you know, are, are postmenopausal women at greater risk for heart disease? And if so, why is that? Yeah. You know, that's a really good question. And I think it, it, um, it, it concerns a lot of people and it also has kind of given us some hints on how to approach heart disease in women. It turns out that women get heart disease about 10 years later than men. And the reasoning behind that is it seems to be tied to when women go through menopause. So then you would think, well, gosh, if um, menstruation or estrogen cycling is good for women to prevent heart disease, then maybe if we replace estrogen in women, it would prevent heart disease. Unfortunately, as much as that's been looked at, we have not found any conclusive evidence that estrogen is helpful or harmful in, in patients for the prevention of heart disease. So our recommendation is really to not recommend it in patients and really to have women discuss that with their doctors because there might be other reasons they should have estrogen replacement, but it's not really recommended for the prevention of heart disease. Okay. So let's talk about the differences between men and women and symptoms of heart attacks. So I hear there might be some differences in symptoms between men and women who might be experiencing a heart attack. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so women, part of the, I think the issue is, is, is cultural. You know, heart disease was originally described by men about men. And so the, so our, 
symptoms that we have come to regard as typical are really just part of how the disease was discovered and described. So our typical symptoms are chest heaviness, tightness that might radiate to your neck, shoulders, back, or abdomen. Women get those symptoms too, but women also might be more likely to have no chest discomfort but just shortness of breath, or maybe just nausea without the chest discomfort. Um, Another symptom of heart disease that is common, or heart attack, that's common in both men and women is sweating. So women have a little bit different symptoms, but they're all part of the same um, kind of basket of symptoms that point people toward heart disease. That's great, good information. Um, we have about a minute left. Any other final closing thoughts that you might have for our viewers that would just help them be more informed and engage as patients in terms of you know, taking care of their heart and, and knowing what to look for. Yeah, well one of the things that I think is the most important for everyone is to listen to your body, to really listen to it. Like what does it need? Does it need exercise? Does it need healthy food? Um, how is your weight? I cannot stress enough that most of the reduction that we see in heart disease is due to the prevention and the main risk factors, which is don't smoke, maintain your ideal body weight, exercise regularly. We recommend 150 minutes of aerobic exercise each week. Eat lots of vegetables and fruits. Try to limit your carbohydrates. Um, those kinds of things really will help people if they're, in, if they're serious about reducing their risk for heart disease. Well, that is such great information, and I'm sure viewer, viewers will appreciate all of the tidbits you've shared with us today. So I thank you so much for making it here. We appreciate it very much. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, on behalf of our viewers, I want to thank Dr. Hecker again for this great information. Up next, we'll talk about what you can do to help prevent heart disease. Stay tuned. <music>